If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and another sewing video. Today I am super happy to be sewing along with you the Adina Zipper Bag by Sewing Arts Designs. Let me give you a quick tour of this bag. So, isn't she classy? I love her. Um, as you can see, she's a small to medium size when she is zipped up. See how she's got zippers on the side? There's a reason for that. She is closed up with a swivel clasp. Underneath the swivel clasp, we have a slip pocket here. And on the inside, see how it's all, it's kind of small on the inside for when you want a smaller bag. If you need a little extra room, all you have to do is undo these zippers, pop out the sides. Look at that, she's a little bit wider. And I just love the shape of this. On the inside, I have done a zipper pocket with overlay as well as two slip pockets. Love her. Um, I thought this was going to be a super involved sew. No, it wasn't even a super involved cut. It was actually fairly easy. The hardest part of this whole bag was actually sewing down, I don't remember which side, side it is, but just one side of each of the um, zipper sections. But actually it's not even hard. It just is a little bit awkward, but still take it slow, super easy. I do it with you in this video. Uh, materials I used in this bag. Uh, this is actually a faux leather that I had been kind of hoarding for a while. I picked this up when I was on my Indonesian travels uh, last December. So I finally ha found the perfect bag for this gorgeous vinyl. So unfortunately, you can't buy this vinyl in North America because I picked it up in Indonesia. Um, my lining fabric is a, it's the 400, no, no. Yes, I used the 400 denier, uh, Waterproof canvas from Sam Fabrics Creations up here in Canada. It's a really nice printed one. Um, she has her waterproof canvases in 400 denier, 600 denier, and a 600 PVC denier, which I just love for exteriors of the bags. But um, yeah, this one is a 400. I like the 400 to the 600 for the lightings. It's very, very nice. Interfacings in this bag. I have Decaville Light in the bottom. I have used and in my flap, I do the flap a little bit different um, because from Germany where she is from to North America, our interfacings are so different. At the beginning of the cutting tutorial, um, if you wanna watch that, I talk about interfacings a little bit more as we go through. So um, my substitutions for some of her interfacings is I did use foam in this. I've got some Decaville Heavy in the bottom. I put Decaville Heavy in the flap. Um, of course, outside of the seam allowances, my foam, I show you a way, um, my way of getting the foam nice and compressed so it's not in the way too much. I didn't have any cotton pieces, but if I was using cotton pieces, I would have made sure to back them with a medium woven interfacing, but because I use canvas, I did not have to do that. Um, all of my hardware is from Emmeline Bags. My Decaville Heavy, you can buy it at Emmeline Bags. Thank you so much, Ed Manor, for allowing me to make this tutorial. Yeah, how about we get to sewing this bag? I'm just so excited to show it. So, yes, let's get a sewing. So you're gonna need some rivets, number five zipper tape, four rectangular rings, four strap pins, optional, three zipper pulls, number five, magnetic snap, a swivel clasp, an O-ring or D-ring in your nameplate, as well as some foam. Your inside pocket pieces. Your two lining main panels. Your exterior main panels. Your two aside zipper pieces. Your bottom piece with decaval heavy outside of the seam allowances. Four connectors. Two handles. Your two pieces for your flap with the decaval heavy outside of the seam allowance. 
your flap lining piece, your two swivel and D-ring uh, clasp pieces, your two uh, zipper band type pieces, your exterior and lining front slip pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my handles off camera if you need a class on how to do that down below in the description. Okay, so for our slip pocket, we're going to take our lining and our exterior pieces and put them right sides together like so. We're going to clip along that top edge. And then we're going to sew along that top edge with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. you have that done now you're going to take your scissors right into this uh, little crook right here in the middle of the V and cut a line just to before the stitching without cutting the stitching bring the exterior and the lining pieces wrong size together pressing out that seam nicely and securing that seam with clips to prepare for top stitching Once you have that all done, we're going to go ahead and we are going to top stitch this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance just along that top part. That's what that looks like all done. So now what we want to do is we want to take our bottom piece. This will be the piece of our uh, little tab connectors for our D-ring or our O-ring. We have a middle line drawn on the wrong side of this already. Go ahead and use some double-sided tape. And we're going to fold the long edges of this into that center line. Next one I'm going to do is just take a tall, a very small piece and put it on one of the short ends. And I'm using an O-ring instead of a D-ring here. But what you want to do is measure down two inches from that end that you put that double-sided tape on the wrong side. And then take your O-ring or your D-ring, bring it down to that line, fold this wrong sides together, and that's where the tape comes in handy to hold that in place for now. want to make sure it is nice and even and then on our flat piece on the bottom piece go ahead a bottom of the slip pocket find your middle center and on our D ring or O ring we're going to measure down about three quarters of an inch and draw a line and on the back, I'm going to put some double-sided tape straight down the middle. We will not be stitching through that, so it's okay to use it there if your machine is sensitive to that. Now flip your lining out of the way and line this up nice and centered along the bottom of our slip pocket. Now it's very important we do not sew through that lining piece, so make sure the lining piece is out of the way. Make sure this is nice and centered and adjust as needed, like so. And once you're happy with that, once it's perfectly centered, as it's taking me a couple times to figure it out. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and we are gonna to top stitch up here across that line and back down the other side, being sure not to catch that lining in that stitching. So that's what that looks like there. I also went ahead and put some rivets backed with some Decaval Heavy on the back of that for extra security. 
Now you can go ahead and baste the other three sides. So that is done. I'm going to just trim off my little wings here. And then once again, make sure I have my center marked on the bottom. We're going to take our front main panel piece. We're going to fold it in half and mark our top and bottom centers. Again, I like to do mine with little snips within the seam allowance. We're going to take this slip pocket piece and just along um, the sides here, I'm taking just a little tiny piece of double sided tape because I cannot use pins to put this in place as I'm using a vinyl. So that'll help me hold it in place. So line this on and nice and centered to the bottom like so. Matching up your centers of your slip pocket piece and your bottom front main panel. And once you have that nice and centered and straight where you want it to be, you'll just go ahead and use those little pieces of tape to hold the sides in place. So take your time here to make sure it is nice and straight. You want this to look really good because our flap needs to line up nicely within that V shape. I'm happy with where it is now. I'm going to double check, triple check. I always do. Use my tape to kind of hold it where I need it to be so it doesn't slip when I am basting it on. And then we're going to take it to the machine. And we're going to baste down here across the bottom and up the other side. So that is our front panel pretty much done. Now at this point is when we want to add on our foam. So this is my little trick. I like to make my foam about a quarter of an inch bigger than my pieces. Out of my top corners, I've cut away about an inch square out of each. This will help with some bulk later on. So now why I cut excess foam like I do is you can kind of pull the foam nice and tight towards that base. Take your uh, scissors kind of on their side like this. I believe that's like a 45 degree angle or I don't know my angles. And you are just going to trim it like so as close as you can to that basting stitch without cutting the exterior. We're only cutting away the foam. But seriously, let's show you. I'll compare, show you how it compares for thickness. See, the one that we've trimmed back, look how thin that is. So that'll take away that bulk in those seams. So I've done that for all the pieces. Set that aside for now. Now for our four straps here, I'm going to do two with you. Just like we did with the connectors, we're going to put some tape down the center of that center line, fold the long sides into the center. I'm going to go ahead and put a small piece of tape along a one short side again, the top side. And then a draw down, I believe it was one and a half inches. Double check your pattern here, draw a line. And that is where you're going to bring your rectangle ring down and fold this at that line, wrong sides together like so. And then once again, measure down on the right side, three quarters of an inch. Do that for all four. Make sure they're all the same size. Use some double sided tape again down at the center of the wrong sides of these. And it's really going to help us hold these in place. But if you are using cotton, you can definitely use pins. Okay, so we are going to measure in as per the pattern where our placement is of our connectors and draw a line from the center. This is going to help us get these nice and perfect and even. So look at your pattern for those marks. And I'm going to use my ruler, put it along that line, and I'm going to use that ruler as a guide to get my strap nice and straight. So I'm going to kind of stick it down to the left of the line for that side and to the right of the line for the right side. And just like we did with the connectors on the pocket, we're going to go ahead and we are going to top stitch, once I get these nice and straight, up each of those edges across that three quarter of an inch line we drew and back down the opposite edge. You'll do the exact same thing with your back piece, but the back piece will just be the back piece and the connectors, of course. So once again, up here, across here, and back down top stitch for all four. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a rivet above the line and below the line for all four connectors.
This is that all done with pieces of Decava Heavy behind the rivets for extra security. Go ahead and wipe away all of those lines. I just like to use a baby wipe for this. Next, we're gonna pull out our two side zippers and our little uh, zipper extender things here. With our zippers closing to the top, on the bottom of our zipper, right sides together, we're going to go ahead and sew our zipper uh, extender piece on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then pull it down so it's right sides up for both of them and top stitch through the zipper extender with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So that is all done. Now what we want to do is we want to measure up as per the pattern from that little vinyl piece that we attach to the zipper and mark as per the pattern on, on um, the right side within the seam allowance. Just a little bit of a line, like so on each side of the zipper on the right hand side. Make sure they're nice and even. I'm actually going to draw my line using um, my other one that I just did as an example. Double check that they're even. Okay, and then what we wanna do is pull our zipper pull down and you are going to fold the zipper upon itself like so at this 90 degree angle and secure with a pin for both sides. So just like we do when we do our, um, our recessed zippers, we're doing the exact same thing with the ends of these. It's creating a stop with that curve. Then you're gonna go ahead and baste those in place. So that's what that looks like. We're not gonna trim up the zipper where it's all curvy. We're gonna leave that for now. Now we're gonna take this on the wrong side of our zipper and I'm just going to mark where the seam starts, where um, the seam of that zipper band is. Okay, we're gonna put these right sides together with the main panel, line up the bottom like so. The reason we marked it is that is where we will know that we have to put our needle down to pivot to get the shape for this bag. Helps to undo your zipper here. So again, the zipper is right sides together with our main panel. Hold it in place with clips. So, and we're gonna go ahead and do the same with the opposite side, putting it right sides together. Again, making that mark on the wrong side where the seam starts. So we know where to um, put our needle down when we do a slight pivot, clip it in place. Again, it helps to have the zipper undone. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to baste with an eighth of an inch seam allowance down here, but where we made that mark, we're gonna put our needle down here, do a slight pivot, and then continue down with an eighth of an inch for both sides.
Okay, so that's done. Next, we're going to take these side pieces, and it's the top of the side pieces of the wider side. We're going to put it right sides together with what we just did. I'm going to once again mark where that pivot mark is on the wrong side of this. Just kind of look at my tape and line it up. Put her in place. Okay, and then we're going to go down here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and pivot at that mark and continue down to the bottom of each side. Okay, so that's what that is. You can go ahead and you can, uh, actually, I'm going to actually do a little snip of just above where my zipper tape is to open up that seam um, and go ahead and baste that in place. This is really going to help later on when we go to top stitch this to reduce that bulk. That's why we cut that foam away in those corners as well. So cut just to the seam without cutting through the strands or through the stitching just to open up that seam. All right, so now we want to make sure we're pushing that side seam towards the main body and we are going to top stitch down that zipper on both sides with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. That is our front panel done. Doesn't she look great? Okay, so now we're gonna take our bottom piece and our bottom piece we're gonna put right sides together and it should fit into, you can see that little slight cutout on our panel pieces here. We're going to clip it in place. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sew across here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I believe it was. Double check your seam allowances and then top stitch through the bottom piece. Again, I can't remember if it was a quarter of an inch or a three eighths of an inch. So make sure you check your your pa um, pattern piece for that measurement.
this is all done. She has top stitched through the bottom piece with that uh, seam going towards the bottom. Now with the opposite edge, you're going to do the exact same thing with the back panel to attach that bottom piece right sides together like so. So that is the main panels together. Okay, so now we're going to take our other flap connector, the piece that will hold the swivel clasp. And just like we did with the O-ring in my case, or the D-ring if you're using it as per the pattern, we're folding the long edges into the center line. Exactly the same, use that little piece of tape on the top. I'm putting it on the bottom, actually you can do it on the bottom here. Because what we're going to do is put that swivel clasp in and just bring the two short ends wrong sides together like so, nice and even. Next you're going to take the top part of your flap nice and centered. I'm going to use a little bit of tape and you are just going to put your connector on pointing upwards like this, nice and centered. Now I made a mistake here when I cut this out. Look how teeny tiny those little triangle pieces. Yeah, I didn't cut it on the fold. So that is also done wrong in the cutting video. Just take note of that. Make sure you cut it on the fold so your piece is actually wide enough. You will know if you've done it wrong, trust me. Okay, so I'm gonna find the center of this smaller triangle piece along the uh, longest side of this. And then we are gonna put this right sides together, kind of sandwiching between the two flat pieces that swivel clasp connector, like so. You will have little kind of wings hanging out, that's good, and so across here, um, bring it forward and then top stitch with the seam going towards the small triangle. Again, check your pattern for seam allowances. They do change here and there in this pattern and I just can't remember them off the top of my head as I'm recording the voice over here. So make sure you double check those seam allowances. Okay, so that's the exterior done. I went ahead and put in a couple rivets. Make sure you don't put your rivets too close to the edges. You gotta leave room for your seam allowance as well to sew the lining on. So I'm gonna just take some masking tape here and I'm going to pull my swivel clasp up and out of the way as tight as I can and just kind of hold it there with some tape. I'm gonna take my lining piece, put it right sides together. And this is where I said to make sure you don't do your uh, rivets too close to the bottom because we do have that seam allowance to take into account. I almost went too close and I got super lucky. So uh, yeah. So go ahead, clip this all the way around, nice and even. Coco says hi. And then we're going to go ahead once we have everything nice and even and straight you can see i'm very being very meticulous with this one okay we're going to sew down the sides leaving the top straight side open for turning now i am uh, putting my right zipper foot on because i want to get nice and close to where that connector is with that swivel clasp because i did almost put my rivet too far down i got lucky but because i had the zipper foot i was able to get by it without sewing through it so phew i dodged a bullet with that one And right at the tip here you're going to cut it kind of straight across like this without cutting your thread that'll help us get a nice pointy corner same with on these corners cut them like so turn this right side out through that top open edge poking out all of those corners so you get a perfect beautiful shape take your time here to press out all of those seams use a pokey tool like i'm doing if you need to
Then once you're happy with what that looks like, we can go ahead and start clipping this to prepare for top stitching. So we're going to end up basting along that top raw edge. And then we're going to end up top stitching down the other sides, pulling that swivel connector out of the way and top stitching up the other side. So again, I have my zipper fit on here so I can get nice and close to that connector without sewing through that connector. There she is all done. She looks great. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is on the back piece here, we're gonna take that flap, put it right sides together with the back piece, nice and centered. Double check your measurements to make sure it is nice and centered. And I'm okay, we're gonna go ahead and just baste that in place. So once that's basted in place, now we get to do the fun part. You can kind of see how this is starting to come together. It matches up really nicely. So now we need to connect the other sides to the zippers. So this is the hardest part of the bag. It's not too bad, but take your time here. So those little side pieces, you want to kind of um, clip them out of the way so you're not sewing through them just yet. And we are going to match up just like we did with the opposite side, our zipper. We're going to mark where that pivot place is right at that seam where the zipper and that zipper extender meet. And we are going to baste these in place on this side with a eighth of an inch seam allowance, just like we did before, making sure that you're going to put your needle down at that pivot point to get a nice shape. So this was the way I did it from here, pivot and back up here. And I have my zipper foot on here. This just helps make it easier because we are working with the zipper. Now that that's done, now we're going to take that little side piece here and we're going to do just like we did with the other side where we're sandwiching that zipper. Now this side piece is going to have kind of a, a bump in the middle because we need that to be bigger so it will expand out. So you're going to kind of just tuck it in like so, clip it in place. And then once we have that in place, we're going to once again, just like we did with the opposite side, go and sew that down this with the larger seam allowance. Three eighths of an inch seam allowance, I believe it was. Then just like we did on the other side, do those little snips right above the zipper there to open up that seam and baste that seam in place so it stays open later on. Okay, now this is the trickier part. So again, you want your seam to go towards the main back panel here. 
and we are going to top stitch all the way down to the bottom. So it's more awkward than it is hard. Take it slow. Um, it's because you're kind of top stitching this in a tube. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm kind of have it so I'm going through the right side. My wrong side is against the machine. I'm going to make sure my seam is going towards the main panel and just top stitch straight through to the bottom. Now, when you're done and you get to the bottom, make sure your needle is high enough when you pull your uh, bag out from under the machine because you don't want your needle to accidentally snag or rip or um, scrape up your vinyl or your, your material of the bag. So just take it slow. Again, this is the hardest part. The hardest part, the rest is super easy, but again, it's not super hard. It's just awkward to get through the machine. I did try this on the cylinder arm. It did not make it any easier. So um, yeah, just take it nice and slow. Make sure you're peeking in and getting a nice and straight top stitch. If I can do it, you can do it. Okay, take a peek at your work. She looks good, yay! Okay, you're gonna do the exact same thing with the opposite side. Okay, so once we have both sides done, this is what we look like so far. Now we can go ahead and close up these box corners. So these are gonna fit nicely together like so. Clip them in place, bring the side and the bottoms together. For both sides, I kinda see a face there. Then we're gonna go ahead and sew across both of those with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So as you saw, I went ahead and I did two lines of stitching for strength, one just slightly within the seam allowance. You can go ahead and trim off those zipper tails now. That's the exterior done, you guys. Amazing. Now we have the easy stuff left. So turn her right side out, poke out all of your seams, make sure everything looks good. Poke out those bottom corners, they look amazing just kind of do up your flap, kind of make sure everything goes into place nicely. And mine does. And the flap lines up great, which makes me happy. Now we can move on to the lining. Okay, so my lining pockets, I already went ahead and did. If you need a class on how I do my lining pockets, I do have that down in the description. I decided not to do a magnetic snap here. You can decide if you wanna do one or not. Okay, so we're gonna take our lining pieces and put them right sides together like so. We are gonna leave the bottom of this completely open. All we are going to do is sew together these sides. So clip them in place. Don't worry about clipping the bottom. Okay, we're gonna sew down these with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, which I've done there. And now what we're gonna do is find our, our side seam centers here. So I'm just lining up the seams of my main panels to my side panels and doing small snips. We're gonna take our exterior, make sure you have it orientated the way you want your linings to be. I like my zipper pocket at the back. And you see my zipper pocket is open. We do need that. Put your line or your exterior into your lining right sides together. Full bottom open for easy turning. 
match up a main panel center with a few clips. The other main panel center and lining and hold in place with a few clips. Your side mark centers, match those up. Open up your lining seam so it's not as bulky right there. Butterfly it open. And then go ahead and evenly distribute everything around. Clipping all in place. Do not be afraid to use a lot of clips here. I sure will. To finish this on my cylinder arm, if I was on my flatbed, I would go ahead and stitch around the inside here. But on a cylinder arm or a uh, free arm, I'm going to do it from the outside here and go all the way around this opening with the seam allowance as stated in the pattern. Then I went around with the second line of stitching within the seam allowance again just to make it a little more secure. Go ahead and turn it nice and easy like so. Give it a little bit of a tug to make sure that nothing um, was left out of that seam. Mine looks good. Stuff the lining inside and then go ahead and roll your seam between your fingers and secure the clips to prepare for top stitching. Now you're not going to be able to clip where the flap is here so when we do take this to the machine to top stitch you're just going to make sure that your lining is nice and snug right along there you'll just be very aware of what your lining is doing so go ahead and finish clipping around the opposite side and once that's done we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to top stitch all the way around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance
So that is done. It looks great. And now all we have left to do is to close up that bottom. So you're going to open up that zipper pocket, pull out your zipper pocket lining, reach in through that hole and pull out the entire bottom of the lining of the bag. First, we're going to go ahead and we're going to line up the long edge of that bottom, clip in place. And then we will sew across that as per the seam allowance in the pattern. So that's done, we can go ahead and box these corners. We're just going to get our seams here and we're going to nest them together, the bottom seam and the side seams, hold them together on both sides and sew across those as well. Once that's done, as you can see, stuff it back in through that pocket, double check that it all got caught and if it did, go ahead, fold in the raw edges of your zipper pocket lining place hold together with clips, and then you can top stitch that opening closed with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And that is done. Stuff that back into the bag. I've already gone ahead. I have put my straps on. We can take a peek, admire your work. She looks pretty good. Everything looks like it's functional. We can put in our sides and zip them up. This will get a little bit of memory as they stay zipped up. Our flap looks nice and centered. Our straps are riveted on nicely. Pat yourself on the back. Great job, everybody. See, it was an amazing make. Yay. And then we're done. All right, that's it, that's all. See, she wasn't as complicated as you think. She looks like such a complicated, sophisticated bag, but really, it's a pretty easy sew. I was so pleasantly surprised. It was magic. I love it. I think my clients are gonna love it as well. Anyway, so at any time, if you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up or a comment down below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Every subscribe and every like goes a long way. Again, we did this in our 2023 20, Thursday October classes um, on the membership side. So if you need a slowed down version of this bag, you can always join the membership for a month and watch the replays of that. Yeah. Anyways, until the next one, I'll catch you guys later.